Hi, I'm Daniel, I'm a sleep physician. And if you have insomnia, this channel is for you. My insulin completely stopped working, said no one ever, because your beliefs do not affect how insulin works. Very different from sleep medications. In this episode, we're gonna see what you should be thinking about if you're taking sleep medications and you're sleeping well, if you're taking sleep medications and you're not sleeping well, or if you've never ever taken sleep medications. Welcome back, hope you're doing really, really well. And as mentioned today, we'll talk about medications. Uh, this, the idea to this episode came to me a few weeks ago when I was pondering the fact that I very often hear people say my sleep medication stopped working, but I've never ever heard somebody say my insulin stopped working. The reason is that whether you believe in insulin working or not, it doesn't matter. It, it, it does what it's supposed to do always. It's, it's kind of very simple. You know, you inject your insulin, uh, it opens up those channels that allows sugar to flow from the outside of cells to the inside of cells. Thereby you see how your, you know, your measured kind of capillary or venous blood sugar levels decrease. If you believe it or not, it still works. Now, why is it that so often I hear people say my sleep medication stopped working or they work sometimes, but other times they don't, or, you know, they still keep me from complete sleeplessness, but they, they don't really help me that much anymore. Well, he, here's the thing. So imagine that, you know, this is kind of your baseline, you know, pretty okay sleep. And then this is like, you know, you have more and more insomnia like that, right? Let's say, you know, you're at baseline, you've, uh, let's say you've never taken any sleep medications. You're kind of at your baseline. Something happens. You face some kind of stress in your life. And if you didn't do anything, what happened that you'd have insomnia for a couple days, maybe a week or two, and then it would naturally, you know, uh, subside, right? Uh, now, let's say the same thing happens that, you know, you're facing some stress, you're starting to have insomnia, and then you start taking some medication, and then you start sleeping better. Well, you go back to your same baseline with one difference. Now you have a sleep medication on board as well, right? And now, you know, we're same place. So let's say you have a sleep medication on board here at a certain dose, dosage, right? Now you're at your baseline sleep again, then something stressful happens and you start not sleeping well again. Now here's that point where you're like, whoa, my sleep medication is not working. Well, in fact, what's happening is that, you, you know, it, it was actually never working. You know, you would have gone back to your baseline even without it, but because you're on medication, you thought that it was a medication that was making you sleep. And now you're having insomnia on medication. You think that it's not working anymore and you're prescribed a higher dosage and the insomnia kind of goes back to baseline again. And now it feels like, okay, I just need a higher dose. Now everything's good. You have another episode of stress and you know, that's, that's, you, you can, you can see the pattern, right? So that is why it often feels like the medication kind of, stopped working, I needed a higher dose, and I needed a higher dose, and finally, like, it stopped working completely. And we have a, you know, similar thing that can happen is that um, you may be at a certain level of sleepiness, and sometimes you take a medication and you fall asleep quickly, sometimes you take it and you don't fall asleep, and then it somehow seems like, kind of like, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It, the, the reality is, it never works. It's just, you're depending on how sleepy or how strong sleep drive you have, it seems like it's working or not working. Now, uh, having said all this, you know, of course it is true that uh, sleep medications are sedating, so they can remove some stress or anxiety or thoughts that are keeping you from sleeping, but it's equally true that they cannot produce sleep. Uh, only your own body can produce sleep. And my, the example I often use in clinic to to uh, illustrate that is I tell somebody, let's say you got six hours of sleep out of you know 10 milligrams of Ambien. Let's say you then took Ambien every six hours. Would you sleep all the time? Of course not. Uh, it, it would just make you feel terrible. So that kind of like just illustrates how medications cannot produce sleep, but they can create beliefs. And that is the big problem. When somebody's on like like two, three different sleep medications and they're again starting not to sleep well, they have that belief that in the past, you know, the Ambien was helping and now I need Ambien plus Trazodone and Melatonin 
to achieve the same thing, but in fact, it's nothing to do with that. It's just kind of the natural cycle of, 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 the, of the insomnia in this case that produces that impression that you now need four medications to sleep. And, and that's so detrimental to sleep confidence, you know? Medications take that away from you. They, they make you start believing that you can't sleep on your own, which again, going back to the insulin analogy, it doesn't matter what you believe about the insulin, it'll always work. Uh, but uh, uh, sleep medications can, can, you know, they can erode your sleep confidence. So, so that's the problem. Now, um, summarizing here, we're getting towards kind of the actionable takeaway uh, what should you, you know, how can you use these, these, these insights? Well, if you are taking a medication and you're sleeping pretty good, then the, then, well, then maybe, then why are you on this channel? You might wonder if you were sleeping good, but, but what you can do is one, you can, you don't need to change anything. If you're taking medication, it's a safe one. You don't need to, you don't want to come off of it. Perfect. But I think even though you're sleeping well, it is good to start transferring sleep confidence. It's, start, it's good to start thinking in terms of like, yes, I'm taking this medication and I sleep, but it's not making you, me sleep. So that when you, if you hit a, an, a, a period of time where you're not sleeping well, you're not tempted to kind of like up the dose. You know it, it didn't make you sleep in the beginning. So this is kind of just a natural up, up and down. And you just you just stay with it. Don't change anything and you'll get back again. And, and, and that, that will help you build your own sleep confidence. So that's number one. If you're, if you're sleeping well, you're taking a vacation, consider transferring confidence to the inside. If you're taking a sleep medication and you're not sleeping well, then all this we're talking about is good to know. It's good to know that medications cannot produce sleep. The fact that the medication seems not to work doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. It's just that you know, you're having kind of the natural course of insomnia. And it's, it's not like there's nothing wrong with you. Uh, so that, I think that's really important. And uh, for those people that are, that I see in clinic that are taking medication but not sleeping well, I typically just say, well, take your medication at the same time every night. Don't, don't do anything about that, that now. Just start using the techniques I talk about all the time here, the CBTI techniques. And if you're new to the channel, then check out the first couple of episodes. But basically it's, you know, spending less time in bed, and then shifting attention away from sleep. That's kind of a very quick summary there. And if you have not taken any medications, then uh, it, I think it's very important to know that, they, again, they cannot produce sleep. Uh, medications can kind of reduce some anxiety, but the risk if you're taking a medication is that you start believing that it, will, that it works and then it starts taking away your sleep confidence. That, I think, is the main problem. So if I have a patient that has hasn't taken any medications, I will never prescribe anything because, again, I, I'm afraid I'm going to take sleep confidence away from my patients. So uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, anyone has a question, then please leave a comment or send me an email, daniel at insomniainsight.co, and I'll be back here tomorrow answering questions. Until then, take it easy.